Hi, welcome to WebPixel Live. My name is Adam Hanlon. I'm the editor for WebPixel, and we'd like to thank Inon or Ionon for sponsoring this episode. Inon do a wide range of strobes, including some strobes just released, so some new strobes, um, and uh, arms, torches, and a variety of other underwater photography accessories. Please head on over to Inon, that's I N O N dot J P to check out what they do. Um, I'm very fortunate to be joined by my friend and fellow contributor, Alex. Hello, Alex. Morning, Adam. Good morning. morning. How are you? Yeah, very good. Thanks. All good here. Excellent. Good news. Um, so um, we tend to talk a lot about things that we do on scuba, but I thought I'd ask Alex if he ever goes uses a snorkel when he's taking pictures underwater. Um, well, it's actually a, a favourite topic of mine, so I'm really happy you, you've asked this one. Not only that, is that actually my snorkel has been hanging on the the, the handle of the door of my, my office for a couple of weeks now. So I could actually reach and grab it and, and we go. wave it around, not that it, it serves a lot of purpose. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is my my, 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 well, my trusty snorkel. I have to say, it's the only piece of dive kit I always have my name on because yeah. I lose snorkels at an alarming rate. Yeah. And I, I really like this type of snorkel. It's a very, very simple, um, you know, simple sort of J-tube snorkel, nice mouthpiece. Um, and yeah, this is my, my type of snorkel. But actually, I've been a, a big snorkel fan for a very long time. And probably something you don't know is that in, in a lot of my early underwater photography was done on, on snorkeling because I, I started I underwater photography quite young. Mm. And when you're quite young, you don't have a lot of money. And so you're relying on parents to pay for your diving. And, um, you know, the, the, the parental wallet only stretches so far. Yeah. So I did a lot of my early underwater photography snorkeling out of a necessity. But actually, what I was realizing is that actually that necessity was giving me tremendous opportunities. And I was able to sort of, you know, I saw very clearly that those opportunities were coming from snorkeling. And it was driving my portfolio in different directions to other people. It was giving me different subjects to other people. Yep. And, um, you know, I think it really benefited my photography, not just because I could do it more cheaply, but actually... Doing doing underwater photography and snorkeling sort of opened me up to other things. So I'm a big fan of it. So yeah, I'd, I'd really like to do an episode to persuade scuba divers yeah. to use their snorkel more and to use their snorkel for photography more, um, not just oh you know you know I've run out of air for the day or there's you know actually specifically go out and, and put it on because it will get you into different environments. It will get you different photographic opportunities. The changes you make to your gear, the yeah. way you you know the environments you go into. So I think it's a really good thing. In fact, about 20, well, it was, I think more than 20 years ago, I, um, after doing that presentation at the Visions of the Sea conference about, about showing all my snorkel photography work, right. um, I actually wrote an article in Underwater Photography magazine. And I, I dug it out just for a bit of a laugh when I knew you were going to ask me about snorkels. And this is the, the, the final paragraph of it. Um, so to summarize, what if I was to tell you that I had an underwater photography accessory that enabled you to experiment with a variety of techniques, freed you from, from the rules of dive masters and from having to be with other divers underwater, let you take pictures in photographic environments filled with different species, let you shoot without flash and gave you unlimited time with your subjects. Would you want one? Would it be your favorite underwater photography accessory? It certainly is mine. It's time that you use your snorkel a little bit more. I think so, as a pretty <laughs> cool so, I thought I'd expand on a few of those points as we, as we, we go through this. You make a really interesting point there, Alex. I remember talking about, and, and I'm sure we'll come back to this, but but um, mm. I was I was talking to someone about the the trips that we we run to Mexico for whale sharks, which is all done with a snorkel. But um, mm. but the and, and the, it was a it was a quite a well known underwater photographer. You're saying, oh no, I can't come on that because you guys do, you you guys snorkel, and I. I only do scuba and I at the time I thought I didn't say it because I thought that's that's really limiting you know you've just you've just basically said that you know oh, one of the really good techniques that you can use to to catch pictures in the water you're not prepared to use I, I was surprised at the time mm. um but yeah he was he was like Adam you know I, I'm not going to do a trip with you snorkeling because I don't use a snorkel I use scuba I'm like okay mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, so the, the big motivation for me when I was younger was, was I guess, financial. You know, I, I'm not going to pretend that it wasn't. But that's less of an issue these days because I, you know, in more normal times, I don't have a lack of diving opportunities. Mm. Um, 
yet I still choose to snorkel. I'll still choose to skip dives and do snorkeling. I'll I'll go in the water between dives because there may be an idea I want. And that's something I love about snorkeling. It's, it's ultimately flexible. If yeah. you want hours and hours and hours in the water, that's fine. If you want to go in and you've got one idea and you only need to be in for eight minutes, that's fine as well. Yeah. Um, another thing in the, in the old days was the great thing about snorkeling is you could use as much or as little film as you wanted. And obviously on a scuba dive, when we only had 36 exposures shooting film, you had to meter out that 36 through your kind of hour of scuba diving. You know, you'd look at your dive computer and, you know, these days we never think about it. But in those days, it was very much you'd yeah. look at your dive computer. You'd been in 25 minutes. You know, you, you check your air, you know, you check your no deco time, you check your air. Oh, I've still got loads of air. Oh, my God, I've already shot 28 pictures. Yeah. I can't. I've got to be like miserly now for the rest of the dive. Yeah. Um, Whereas snorkeling was a real freedom from that. But I think in the modern times, I think what snorkeling gives us is, is it's that ability. Okay, I've got an idea. I just want to do this one thing. I'll go and do it and I can back it out again. And it's and then I can be thinking about something else and I can bag those shots. And I, I really like that aspect of it. Yep. Um, I think something else that I really enjoy with snorkeling is that that environment right up near the surface is very beautiful for wide angle. And a lot of scuba divers, they jump in the water, they give an okay to the boat, they drop down, and then once they're down, they start unfolding their camera. Yep. They come to the end of the dive, they fold their camera up, yep. they come up, do a safety stop, send an SMB up. They yep. don't do any photography in that top bit. Yep. And that top bit, you know, where you've got beautiful light, you've got surface reflections, you, you've got snail's window, you've got sunbeams, you know, you've got the ability to do splits. All that environment is, is so photogenic yeah. and a snorkel is a fantastic way to access it. And being, you know, I'm, I'm quite bulked up at the moment, but being streamlined without your dive gear, being able to glide into those shallow environments is, is very, very good. Also, just one very one small point, but it's actually really important, is one of the most beautiful pictures you can do in underwater photography in shallow waters are reflection shots. Yeah. If you're breathing through a tube, your air does not make bubbles on the surface. If you're breathing out of a regulator at the surface, those bubbles are wobbling that surface. Yeah. And you know, if you want those really great reflections, you need to be completely still yeah. and you know, you need to wait. And if you're doing it on scuba, you have to, you know, maybe don't breathe for, you know, 30 seconds until that reflection is really perfect. On snorkel, you can just carry on breathing and wait and not swim, not move, wait for that reflection to be absolutely bang on. And I think particularly for those things, the snorkel is the right tool for the job. Yep. And just as, you know, we're always saying to people, you know, put, make sure you've got the right strobe arms, the right strobes, the right domes, the right lenses for the shots that you want to take. Yep. It's also very true of, of diving equipment. Yep. And, you know, I think that's that for me is a really big part of why I still really enjoy snorkel photography. And, you know, when I'm in, reef environments i'll always make sure you know i'll get that snorkel on and go and do certain shots that i know are better than that and it's not just the big animal shots it's it's also those environmental shots i, I don't think sorry i'm rabbiting on but i don't think snorkel is really the best for macro i think it's very much it's time to go wide you want to think do i want strobes do i not want strobes but you know make those decisions and then work those shots you can always go in and do you know, half an hour without strobes, enjoy the freedom of it. And then, oh, I really want strobes for that shot. OK, I'll come back to shore, get some strobes or come back to the boat, get some strobes and do some other shots. I think that uh, in general, when we're talking about snorkeling here. We're talking about largely remaining at the surface with a snorkel. So um, and uh, obviously when we start diving down underwater, um, that adds a complication. Going back to your 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 mm. comments about gear, Alex, I, I tend to find that I'm fine at the surface with with strobes. I can cope with strobes, you know, on my camera housing. But when I start trying to free dive down, and free dive is it? But when I start trying to dive down, let's, let's ignore the free diving bit for the minute. And um, yeah. I, I I actually find that 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 strobes actually become I can't I haven't got enough time to manage all the bits and pieces while I'm at the surface breathing continuously. I can adjust my strobes. I can adjust powers. I can do everything else. I actually find when I go start going underwater, start holding my breath, I I haven't got the bandwidth to be able to do that and 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 i find then really simplifying my gear is 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 definitely the way forward by by taking mm -hmm. strobes off taking everything off basically done with just the housing 
Um, yeah, I certainly. I mean, you know, I mean, what I didn't, you know, wanted to sort of steer away from is, you know, the free diving underwater photographers who do some beautiful work. Yeah, absolutely. They use free diving as a tool for all their photography. Yeah. But a lot of their photography is done at depth. Um, and I think what I was really wanting to encourage people is people who are normally scuba diving underwater photographers, yeah. not necessarily to become hyper trained free diving photographers, yeah. but to remember that you can, you know, you can grab your snorkel and, you know, you can ex it, it, get yourself some very unique and different photographic opportunities that as a scuba diver you miss. Yeah. And I think the mistake is to go, right, I'm going to go free diving. I'm going to take all the same pictures by diving deep. And yeah. take all the same pictures yeah. I can take on scuba. Yeah, yeah. Actually, you, when you when you go put a snorkel on, it's about taking shots you wouldn't take as a scuba diver, or shots you can take better. And I think that diversifies your portfolio and gives you a, a better quality uh, of image. Yeah. And it's it's an important um, it's an important intellectual step to make because I think for a lot of us, you know, we maybe had our first experiences of, of the underwater world snorkeling. You yeah. know, almost everyone tried snorkeling before they start diving. Yeah. Then you learn to scuba dive, and then after you've learned to scuba dive, you learn to become an underwater photographer. Is the kind of normal progression. People then forget to go back. You know, we're always telling people, you know, you know, once you bought two strobes, remember to go back to one. Sometimes, you know, <laughs> say once you learn to scuba dive, remember to go back to snorkeling because it will give your photography different opportunities. And I think that for me is is what's really great about it is you will get shots snorkeling that you know that. You know, sometimes you'll take shots that you could have taken scuba on scuba, but a lot of the times you just get that very different perspective, and it's fantastic for your portfolio. Where you've got the sort of classic um, um, Egyptian Red Sea, where you've got like a reef plate coming out from the from the shore, the fringing reef, and it often is very shallow. You know, you've only got yeah. you know fifty centimeters, a couple of feet of, of of water on top of the reef plate. You've got you know, on a, on, a, on a calm day, you've got beautiful reflections. There's often a lot of fish life in that area too. You know, and, and you're not going to get in there on scuba. It's, it's not going to happen, no. or not safely. You're going to damage stuff doing it. Um, so, um, so you know, and it's just such a good opportunity, as you say. And, and, and so oftentimes, you know, you sit there. I've often sat there on a safety stop, looking at that, thinking, I want to go in there, and not really being able to because of, because of the the bulk of the scuba gear and everything. And and you know, you can just get back on the boat, drop off your scuba gear grab a snorkel and go and get those shots. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I would say to people, you know, gear wise, you know, if you're on a, you know, normal diving trip, I would, you know, go snorkeling with your wide angle lenses. I would do some with fish eyes, some with other wide angle lenses, rectilinear wide angles or, 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 or that sort of thing. I would leave the strobes behind. I think it's great for your photography to shoot in available light. It will force you to take very different types of images. And I think it will drive you, in nice ways. If you've got someone who can pose in your pictures, that's even better. It adds some additional interest in that shallow water environment. But don't do that every dive because you will not look for photographic opportunities if you've got, you know, someone there all the time. You just end up taking only pictures of them. Yeah. Um, and then go and explore those environments that you you don't go and see. It's, it's still underwater photography. I remember in that presentation I, I gave at the, the Visions Conference, years and years and years and you know 20 plus years ago um about snorkeling i remember showing pictures of of rocks and boulders in shallow water and the reflections and the way the waves were moving over them and distorting reflections and yeah. you know there's some really really interesting photography in that environment and you don't need to get in the sea you know this can be river photography and i think it's about remembering that underwater photography is about images it's not just about you know recording the dive yeah. and go into those shallow environments with a quest for a really great visual image rather than any specific subjects or specific thing, I think you'll get the most out of that type of photography. Yeah, fantastic. Um, we should probably um, just uh, briefly uh, a safety note um, in that there's quite a lot of debate about combining scuba diving and snorkeling. Um, obviously, if you have been diving, um, Diving under the water with a snorkel on may not be a wise idea, but you can snorkel at the surface to your heart's content. The issue is the change in pressure. So, um, you know, what we were saying earlier about this idea of, you know, go for a dive, come back in, grab you. That's fine as long as you're snorkeling at the surface. When you start diving down, then you start changing pressures and things get more complicated. Um, so it may be wise not to be diving beneath the surface between dives or, 
or after after dives. Um, but certainly staying at the surface and you know with snorkeling is, is perfectly safe. There's no issue with that at all. Yeah. Just put a nice thick wetsuit on and forget your weight belt. That's right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect. Um, that's wonderful. Alex. That's great inspiration for us all. I think um, to remind us of um, where we started. Um, I, I, I'm sure if we browse Alex's collection, you'll see pictures that are obviously shot on snorkel. Um, so yeah, not tagged. I mean, if you if you type snorkel into the search on my website, you'll probably just get lots of pictures of people going snorkeling. Yeah. Um, which I obviously was taking while snorkeling, but as I said, I think. A lot of the more interesting work is that shallow water reflection, split level, and that, you know, so you know, maybe, maybe something like shallow water would be a good thing to search for. Type in, you know, just on my website, I think that might bring up, you know, there'll be pictures there clearly taken on scuba, but just the inspiration of what's possible in that shallow environment. Maybe we should launch a theme on, 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 on the Wet Pixel Facebook group or something saying, you know, Today is snorkel day, and get people to to share pictures that they've shot while snorkeling. That would be might be fun to do, um, and I'll give that some thought. So anyway, thank you very much, Alex, um, and thanks again to our sponsor. That's in on for sponsoring this episode. Our sponsor support is is really important. And um, thank you all for watching. Please feel free to add any comments to the comment section below and to drop us a like. Um, now I gather if you ring the bell. Um, it actually will automatically inform you when new episodes are, are, um, are, are launched. So please click the bell as well. Thank you very much. I look forward to seeing you next time.